Hello, mighty companions. Hello, mighty companions. Hello, mighty companions. Welcome to the way of mastery. Mighty companions, welcome to the way of mastery. Here on Facebook Live. I'm Earl Purdy, and I want to welcome you to the way of mastery. We are going to be in the way of knowing. Hello, everyone. We're going to be on page 298. In the Way of Mastery, page 298, you have the power to awaken to your true nature now. You have the power to awaken to your true nature now. You have the power to awaken to your true nature now. In the Way of Knowing, page 298, in the Way of Mastery. I want to welcome you and remember that you need not believe the ideas. You need not accept the ideas. You need not even welcome or accept or believe the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist and some of the ideas you may find quite startling. Some of the ideas you will find hard to believe. This is not an analyzing group. You're not asked to analyze the ideas at all. We're not going to analyze the ideas. We're going to hear them and use them. Their use will give the ideas meaning to you. And their use will show you that the ideas are true. Using it will show you that the ideas are true. Did you hear me say using the ideas? Using the ideas will show you that the ideas are true. Page 298 is good to be with you, mighty companion. We're going to be on page 298. I'm going to read through the first paragraph, and then I'm going to go through, the, through it to see if we can really get what the message is, okay? Are you with me? Here we go. Have you suffered? Have you suffered because God has chose it. Have you suffered? Have you suffered because God chose that you suffer? No, not at all. You've never suffered because God chose that you suffer. No, not at all. For in truth, and I want you to please listen carefully, please listen carefully. This is going to be a radical statement. It's going to challenge you, but I'm going to say what the way of mastery says. Suffering does not exist. What? Suffering does not exist. Suffering does not exist. Suffering does not exist. Does not exist. Only the reality of love can exist. Only the reality of love can exist. You are that one with the power to awaken to your true nature. You are the one with the power to awaken to your true nature. I say, you are that one with the power to be awakened to your true nature. You have the power to be awakened to your true nature right here. You have the power to be awakened to your true nature right now. You have the power to be awakened to your true nature right here. Do you know you have the power? The power. Do you know that you have the power? You have the power. You have the power to be awakened to your true nature right here. 
and right now. Indeed, only when you have given up what? You have to give up attachment to modalities. What? I say you have to give up attachment to modalities. You have to give up your attachment to the meditations. You have to give up your attachment to the meditations. You have to give up your attachment to the prayers. Do you know you have to give up your attachment to the prayers? To the theologists, you have to give up your attachment to the textbooks, even this textbook. Only when you have given up attachment to all form. What did you say? Only when you've given up attachment to all form. Only when you have given up detachment to all form and merely make the decision. What is the decision that you need to make? What is the decision that you need to make? What is the decision that you need to make? The decision to abide, the decision to abide in the simple knowledge. What is the simple knowledge that you need to abide in? What is the simple knowledge that you need to abide in? What is the simple knowledge that you need to abide in? That you are that one. You are the spirit. God is in you. You are that one. Only then does knowledge permeate your awareness. So when does knowledge permeate your awareness? When you recognize that you are the one. You are the divine. You are God incarnate. You are love incarnate. When you recognize that God is in you and God is in me, that God is all of us, all of us, we are that one. You are that one. When you recognize that, that's when knowledge permeates your awareness. Okay. It's so good to see everybody here. Ah, don't forget, the reason why I do this live is so that you can come in and communicate with each other about trying to remember what we're talking about. And also you can communicate with me and hopefully I'll be able to respond to some of the questions or comments that you may have. But we know that what we're really doing this for is so that we can be reminded of the truth so that we can give ourselves these new ideas because we've learned that our ideas create our reality. Your thoughts create your reality. Your thoughts create your perception of your reality. Your thoughts create your reality. Your thoughts create your perception of reality. So we want to remember these thoughts so that we can give ourselves a new reality. We're on page 298 in the Way of Mastery, Part 3, The Way of Knowing. You have the power to awaken to your true nature now. So what was the point? What was, what was the point of what we heard in that first paragraph that I read? First thing that he said that, that the way of master is telling us that we need to get really clear about is that God is not causing any suffering. That none of the suffering that we perceive is being caused by love. None of the suffering, none of the pain, none of the suffering, none of the poverty, none of any kind of suffering is being caused by God, which is love, our creator love love never causes suffering love never causes suffering fear and separation causes suffering love which is god never causes suffering and we need to remember that the only thing that's real is love so that means that the only thing that will ever last permanently is love so do you know that that means wherever you see any suffering wherever you see any pain it has to end. It cannot last. And it can't last because God did not create suffering. So therefore, suffering cannot ultimately last because suffering does not ultimately exist because only love is real. Now, when I share this with you, I want you to remember, I'm not trying to convince you of what I'm saying. I'm not going to defend what this is saying. What we are doing right now is spirit is just telling us how it is and then it's going to show us how to recognize that this is true. So what is the main point that it's trying to get us to see? 
that you need to let go of the idea that God is condemning you or causing any kind of suffering because God is love and what's real love never ends and it never causes suffering. Also, it's telling us that you have power and the power that you have is you have the power to wake up to your true nature. You have the power to wake up to your true nature when you have the power to you have the power to wake up to your true nature right here. You have the power to wake up to your true nature right now. So what is your true nature? What is your true nature? Your true nature is love. Your true nature is that you are love. You are lovable and that you are loving. You have the power. You have the power to do what? You have the power to wake up. You have the power to wake up. You have the power to wake up to what? You have the power to wake up to the fact that you are love. You are love. You are loving. You are lovable. You have the power to wake up to that. Now, when do you have the power to wake up? You have the power to wake up right here. You have the power to wake up right now. You have the power to wake up right here. You have the power to wake up right now. Now, what is, the, what is it that we were told that we need to give up our attachment to? What is it that you need to give up your attachment to? Do you know what you need to give up your attachment to? You need to give up your attachment to modalities, to meditations, to prayers, and to textbooks, to theologies. It's time for you to give up your attachment. It didn't say that you could not use these things, but the way of mastery is telling us you need to give up your attachment, your attachment even to textbooks, your attachment to theologies, your attachment to meditations, your attachment to prayers, and do what? So if you're not going to be attached to any of those things, what is it that you're supposed to do? Well, the way of mastery says you're supposed to live that you're supposed to live in simple knowledge. It's time for you to live in simple knowledge. And what is the simple knowledge that you need to live in? You need to live in the simple knowledge that you are that one. You are God. You are love. You are that one. You are God. You are love. It's time for you to live in the knowledge that you are divine. You are love. You are God incarnate. It's time for you to live in that simple knowledge. And only then, when you realize who you really are, when you realize who you really are, when you realize who you truly are, that's when knowledge will permeate your awareness. You will be absolutely aware of everything that you need to know when you identify with who and what you really are. That's right, Kim. Be willing to live in the simple knowledge of love. That's right, Diana. Be willing to give up the attachment to form. Living in the simple knowledge that you are that one. You are that divine one. Listen to me now. You are that divine one. You are spirit. You are God. And so is everything you see, God. Everything we are looking at is God. Everything that is real is love, and love is God. You are the divine essence. You are God, extending God's self into eternity. That's who you are. That's what that first paragraph in that section, you have the power to awaken to your true nature right now, is telling us. So try not to use that information to battle with it, to argue with it, to debate with it. There's no point in arguing with the truth. There's no point in getting upset about a fact. A fact the fact is God does never never ever makes anyone suffer. The fact is that suffering doesn't really exist because it can't last forever because only love is real. You have the power right now to awaken to your true nature right here and right now. You have to give up your attachment to all of the modalities, all of the meditations, the prayers, and the theologies. You have to give up your attachment to it right now. And you have to make the decision that you're going to live in the knowledge that you are love, you are God, you are spirit. You have to live in that simple knowledge. And when you live in that simple knowledge, do you know what's going to happen? When you live in that simple knowledge, you're going to have 
You're going to have knowledge, certainty. It's going to permeate your awareness. And you will know a peace and a happiness and a joy beyond anything that you have ever, ever experienced. That's right. Some of the comments are, God, 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 God. We've got the power. Suffering doesn't exist. These are some of the comments that I am seeing before me right now. So let's go to the next paragraph. First, I'm going to read through it. Then I'm going to go through it in detail and then give you an opportunity to make comments about it. So listen to this. <clears throat> if there was something you had to do to get God, if there was something that you had to do to get love, then God is apart from where you are. Love would be separate from where you are if you have to do something to get love. If you think you have to do something to get love, to get God, then God, which is love, is apart from where you are. Yet it is the very love of pure consciousness. Do you know that it is the love of pure consciousness that gives you the power? Do you know that it is your love of pure consciousness to give you the power, 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 to perceive that, guess what? It is the very love of pure consciousness that gives you the power to perceive that there is something you must do to get to God. Therefore, do you know God is always present? Tell yourself, God is always present. Tell yourself, God is always present. God is always present. Is always present. Say it. God is always present. That's the same as saying, love is always present. Love is always present. Love is always present. Say it to yourself. Say it to yourself. Say it to yourself. Say it to yourself. God is always present. Say it to yourself. God is always present. God is always present. That it means what? That God is always present. If there was truly some form of meditation that could enlighten you, if there truly were some form of meditation that could enlighten you, it would mean that you were truly apart from God at some point. If there was some form of meditation that could enlighten you, that would actually mean that you were truly separate from God at some point. But it's not possible for you, that one, God, to be separate from itself. It's not possible for God to be separate from itself. Did you hear what I just said? You are you are God. You are love. You are an extension of God. You are an extension of love. And it's not possible for God to be separate from God. So if there was anything you needed to do to get to God, that would mean that God was separate from you as something for you to try to get to. If you had to do something to actually get to love, do you know that that would mean that you are not one with love? God is always present. Love is always present. Whether you realize it or not, whether you feel it or not, whether you know it or not, God is always present. Whether you feel it or not, whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, God is always present. Whether you feel it to be true, whether you know it to be true, love is is always present. And if there was some kind of meditation that could enlighten you, then that would mean that you still needed to try to get to God because it would seem like God was separate from you if you had to get to God. If you had to meditate to get to God, that would mean that God was somewhere separate from you. But you are God. You are love, and so is everything you see. So that means that you are not separate from yourself, and God is yourself, and love is yourself. God is yourself, love is yourself, and nothing can separate you from yourself. 
Comments. He's with me wherever I know, whether I, whether I know it or not. Comment. Love is always present. God is always present. No need to get to God. We are God. Comment. We are all living in one man. We are all living in one man. Breathe. Ah, don't you breathe, don't you breathe, don't you breathe, don't you breathe, breathe. Ah, you want to breathe. Ah, you want to breathe now. Breathe now. Yeah, here we go. Allow then the mind to rest. Allow then the mind to rest. Rest in what? Allow the mind to rest in what? In the simplicity that what is true has been true always. What is true has always been true. What is true has always been true. And allow your mind to rest in the simplicity that where you abide, you are merely the manifestation of that one, God and love, showing up as a man or a woman. Listen to this. You are the manifestation of God showing up as a man or woman. You are a manifestation of God showing up as a man or woman. You are a manifestation of God showing up as a man or woman. You what do you know? Do you know? Do you know that you are a manifestation of God showing up as a man or woman? Who say, I am a manifestation of God showing up as a man. Or you could say, I am the manifestation of God showing up as a woman. You are the manifestation of God showing up as a man or woman. That's what you are. I say you are a manifestation of God showing up as a man or woman. Yeah, you, all of you, you are a manifestation of love showing up as a man or woman. You are a manifestation of love showing up as a man or woman. Then it says, in true knowledge, in genuine true knowledge, in genuine true knowledge, which exists here, right now, and cannot be gotten tomorrow, there is only the pure simplicity of the moment. There is only the pure simplicity of the moment that is arising. There is only the pure simplicity of the moment that is arising. Looked upon with perfect innocence. Do you know that we're having the simplicity of a moment that is coming up in perfect innocence? This is a moment right now that is coming up in total innocence. This moment that we are together right now is an innocent moment that we are sharing together. That's why I do this live presentation on Facebook Live, so that we can have an experience of our mighty companions, so that you can have the experience of your mighty companions with you right here and now, so that you will know you are never alone. You are never alone. That's why I'm doing this so that we can come together and feel each other, and you will know that you are not alone. So what is it saying to us? That when you realize this moment is showing up in perfect innocence, it says, in true knowledge, there is perfect peace. So how can you tell when you are experiencing true knowledge? How can you tell when you really experiencing true knowledge? In true knowledge, there is complete peace. When you are centered in true knowledge, you will have complete peace. When you are centered in complete knowledge, you will have total peace. When you have total peace, you know that you are centered in true knowledge. In true knowledge, there is perfect peace. In true knowledge, you merely abide awake. 
Do you know that when you have true knowledge, you're just living from a space of being totally awake? When you are abiding, when you are living in true knowledge, it says in true knowledge, one merely abides awake. When you're in true knowledge, you are an awake soul. And when you are awake soul, it says you're witnessing the play and display of phenomena, which is indeed arising only within that one mind that the sonship is. What does that mean? When you have true knowledge, you're going to be in complete peace. And when you're in complete peace, do you know, do you know that you are going to be living as an awake being? And when you're living as an awake being, you just be witnessing what you will call play and you will be watching all of the phenomena that's happening before you and you will see that everything is happening within the one mind that we are. We are part of one mind. There is only one mind. I know it looks like there are many, many minds, but we are part of the one mind. Do you know that when you wake up to who you really are spiritually, do you know that when you wake up to what you really are, you will be looking at this as if this is a great game that is going on. You will be like enjoying all of the different phenomena that's happening around you because you will realize that is coming from the one mind that we all are. Everything, everything is, a, is coming from the one mind that we all are. Comments. I am in perfect peace because I am true knowledge. Comment. The one mind we all share. Comment. Divine. Comment. All the world's a stage. All the world's a stage. Comment, all the world is a stage. Do you see what I'm doing? What I'm doing is delivering this message, trying to the best of my ability to allow spirit to use me as a conduit to bring these words to life. Because it's in our remembering this that we will perceive this. It's in our remembering this that we will experience it. The experience of our God self, the experience of your God self, the experience of your light, your truth, your power, your awakening, that's going to come from your remembering. Remembering what? Remembering that in true knowledge, in genuine true knowledge, which exists here and now and cannot be gotten tomorrow, there is only the pure simplicity of the moment that's coming up right now for you to look at in innocence. Do you know that in true knowledge, there is only perfect peace? There is only perfect peace. There is only perfect peace. When I repeat these things, say it with me. There is only perfect peace. In true knowledge, there is only perfect peace. In true knowledge, there is only perfect peace. In true knowledge, there is only perfect peace. So when you have true knowledge, what happens? You live awake and you're looking at this game. You're looking at this elaborate play. When you wake up to your true self, you will just be looking at all of the phenomena around you and you will be in bliss consciousness because you will know that everything that you are looking at is coming from the one mind, the one mind of God, the one mind of love that we share because there's only perfect peace in true knowledge. I have said often to you, I've said often to you that you cannot truly make a wrong turn. Do you hear me? You can't truly make a wrong turn. You can't truly make a wrong turn. And nobody has ever made a wrong turn on his or her journey. You've never made a wrong turn on your journey. You have never made a wrong turn on your journey. I know it may look like you've made wrong turns. I know it may look like you have made wrong turns sometimes. You may think you've made a wrong financial turn. Or you may think you've made a wrong relationship turn. But the truth is, you've never made a wrong turn on your journey. You can't make a wrong turn on your journey. Because how could this be possible for you to make a wrong turn on your journey? In the field of pure love that is God, do you know that in the pure love that is God, 
How could you make a wrong turn if you're in the pure love that is God? Only love is real. 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 Real. Only love is real. Only love is real. Only love is real. Only love is real. So what did you hear? You can't make a wrong turn. You can't make a wrong turn on your journey because you are operating from within God. You are operating from within the field of love. So that means that only love is real. I'm saying only love is real. I say only, 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 only love is real. Only love is real and love is freedom. Only love is real and love is freedom. Only love is real and only love is real. Only love is real and love is freedom. Love is freedom. Love is freedom. If it's love, you have freedom. If you're in any kind of if you're in any kind of relationship and you're not free, if in, if you're in any kind of situation where you don't feel free, then you're not feeling love if you don't feel free. You're not feeling love if you don't feel free. You're not feeling love if you don't feel free because only love is real and only freedom is real. Only love is real and love is freedom. Only love is real and only love is freedom. Only love is real and only love is freedom. Comment. The comments I see is love is freedom. Another comment I see is love is freedom. Another comment I see is only love is real and love equals freedom. Another comment is only love is real and love is freedom. I love how you all are allowing yourself to hear this and to receive this and to uh, repeat this and tell yourself this truth because I'm telling you that's where the miracles come from. The miracles don't come from analyzing it. The miracle comes from remembering it. Remembering that only love is real. Remembering that you can't make a wrong turn on your journey because you are in that field of love called God. You're in God's hands now and you can't make a wrong turn. How could it be possible in the fear in the field of pure love that is God to make a wrong turn? So take a breath. You are welcome, Diana, and all of you. Here's the next paragraph. You have allowed yourself, you have allowed yourself, you have allowed yourself as God to formulate shapes of experience. That's what you've been doing. You've been formulating shapes of experience. Your life is the formulation. It is the shape of your experience, but you have been formulating, you have been formulating, you have been formulating the shape of your experience. I have been formulating the shape of my experience. I have been formulating the shape of my experience. I have been formulating the shape of my experience merely to experience it. Do you know that you have been formulating the shape of your experience just to experience it? Do you know that you have been formulating the shape of your experience just to experience it? You have allowed yourself as God to formulate the shape of your experience. You have been formulating the shape of your experience just to experience it. The Course says love is freedom. They're not two different things. That love is freedom. And freedom is seeing yourself as innocent. The Course says seeing yourself and knowing yourself 
as innocent. But remember, we're doing the way of mastery. That the, what we're studying is the way of mastery. So try not to compare the way of mastery to what the Course in Miracles is saying. What we want to do in the way of mastery class is really understand what the way of mastery is teaching us. And what the way of mastery is teaching us is that every tear that you have cried, every loss that you have felt, every tear that you have cried, every loss that you have felt is yet only God choosing to have that experience. So what does that mean? That every experience you have had and every experience you have is either love or a call for love. It is an experience that God has chosen to experience. You have remained eternally free in each moment. So you are always free to do what in each moment? The thing that you are free to do in each moment is to choose again. No matter what you are going through, you can choose again. No matter what the experience or situation you're in right now, don't you know you can choose again? Whatever you're being confronted with in your experience right now, you can choose again. Choose again. Choose again. Because you are eternally free. You are eternally free. You are eternally free to choose again. And indeed, guess what? And indeed, you will choose again and choose again and choose again without end. As long as you are here, you're going to choose. And basically, there's not but two things to choose. You're going to either choose to have an experience of love or an experience of fear. You're either going to have the experience of joy or you're going to give yourself the experience of pain. You're going to choose to give yourself the experience of abundance or you'll choose to give yourself the experience of lack. Those are just two things, love or fear. There is not a time that God will cease to be. There is not a time that love will cease to be. Love will always exist. Remember, love will always exist. I'm, I'm not going to talk about the difference between the Course in Miracles and the Way of Mastery. I'm going to only focus in on what this section is teaching. I'm going to only focus on what this section is teaching. And what this section is teaching is that you will always remain eternally free to choose. And there is not but two things that you are choosing. And you are choosing between truth and illusion, love or fear. And what this other thing that this section is saying is that you are formulating all of the experiences that you have so that you can have that experience. And that's what I mean. I'm not trying to uh, not answer all questions. I'm just not going to answer questions that are not related directly to what I'm sharing right now so that we can stay on purpose. Because the the key to having the joy and the bliss that the way of mastery is teaching and the Course in Miracles for that matter is for us to start to put our attention on remembering what the material is telling us. And what the material is telling us is that you have allowed yourself to give yourself the experiences that you are having. We are being told that Everything that you are experiencing is something that God is choosing to experience through you. What are we being told? We are being told to remember that we are eternally free and that we are inter eternally free in each moment to choose again. Also, we were told that you're going to choose and you're going to continue to choose. As long as you're here, you're going to be making choices. And there will never be a time 
that God will cease to be. Remember, there will never be a time that love doesn't cease to be. Because if God could cease to be, if it was possible for God to cease to exist, then God is not God. God is not God if God could cease to exist. Do you know that that's the same as saying love isn't love if it could cease to exist? If you are with someone and you say you don't love them anymore, you never love them in the first place because love could never end. Love could never cease to exist. Maybe the form that you relate to that person may change. In other words, you could have been in the form of thinking you were married to them and now you're divorced. Or you could, you could have believed you were in the form of being their lover, but now you're just in the form of being their friend. So form can change. But if it's real love, real love cannot cease to be. If it is real, nothing can end it if it's real. So there's no such thing as, I used to be in love with you, but I'm not in love with you now. No. I can block the love. I can... Uh, keep myself from knowing the love, but there's nothing I could do to end real love. So it says, for if God could cease to be, then God is not God. For there would need to be a field of energy in which none being could exist. And the way of master is saying, there isn't a field of energy where none being could exist. So, what is the characteristic of a mind that is awakened? The mind that is awakened serves only the Holy Spirit. So when your mind wakes up and you begin to really realize who what you really are, the only thing that you're going to want to do is serve love. You're going to want to serve love. As long as you want to serve anything else other than God, anything other than love, as long as you want to serve anything other than the Holy Spirit, then you are not awake. You are still asleep. And if you are still asleep, all you're interested in is power, specialness, money, physical pleasure. These are cool things, but they're neutral things. When you really truly wake up, what you're going to really want to do is serve love. You're going to really want to serve the Holy Spirit. And what is the Holy Spirit? Listen very carefully. What is the Holy Spirit? What is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is merely right-mindedness. Right-mindedness is the Holy Spirit. So the mind that is awakened serves only the right-mindedness. When you wake up spiritually, you're going to only want to serve the Holy Spirit. What did the Way of Mastery say the Holy Spirit was? The Way of Mastery says the Holy Spirit is right-mindedness. And what is right-mindedness? What is right-mindedness? What is right-mindedness? Right-mindedness, what is right-mindedness if not true knowledge? So right-mindedness is true knowledge. What is true knowledge? True knowledge is, is knowing that the mind that is awake only wants to serve God. The mind that is awake only wants to serve the Holy Spirit. And that's true knowledge. Comment, yes, I want to serve love. The Holy Spirit is right-mindedness. The Holy Spirit is right-mindedness. The Holy Spirit is right-mindedness or true knowledge. True knowledge is right-mindedness. That's the comment. True knowledge is right-mindedness. So I want you to take a moment to take a breath. And let that integrate. Let what integrate? That when you wake up, you're only going to want to serve God. You're only going to want to serve the truth. You're only going to want to be a conduit of love and knowledge on this planet. A truly awake spiritual being wants to serve only love. A truly awake mind is a right mind. And when you have a right mind, you have true knowledge. And when you have true knowledge, you only want to serve the Holy Spirit. When you have true knowledge, you know that you are eternally free in each moment to choose again. When you have true knowledge, you will know that God could never cease to be. When you have true knowledge, 
you will recognize that you are the one that's formulating and giving shape to your whole experience. When you have true knowledge, you will know that you are experiencing what God chooses to experience. When you have true knowledge, you will know that you could never make a wrong turn. When you have true knowledge, you will know that no one has ever made a wrong turn on their journey. When you have true knowledge, you will know that only love is real. When you have true knowledge, you will have perfect peace. When you have true knowledge, you will know that you are just witnessing this beautiful play. When you have true knowledge, you will know that the truth is true always. When you have true knowledge, you will recognize that you are nothing but a manifestation of God showing up as you. You are a manifestation of God showing up as you. When you have true knowledge, you will know that there is nothing you need to do to get to God. When you have true knowledge, you will not be attached to anything in this world. When you have true knowledge, you will know that God could never be separate from you. When you have true knowledge, you will know that suffering cannot exist. When you have true knowledge, you will know that only the reality of love can exist. That's what you will know when you have true knowledge. And if you don't have true knowledge, you don't know that right now. So you know that you're supposed to be working on removing the blocks to the knowledge that only love is real. <clears throat> on page 299, the way of mastery says, there is no different. This is no different. This is no it says the way of knowing then is a way of unobstructed feeling. The way of knowing is the way of unobstructed allowance. And you're going to allow not only what is around you, but you're going to allow what is arising from within you. So when you are in the way of knowing, what are you going to allow? You're going to allow yourself to feel all your feelings. When you are in the way of knowing, you will allow yourself to feel everything that is arising and coming up in you. When you are in the true way of knowing, you will allow yourself to feel everything that's coming up within you. So the work that I do communicating this lesson, the work that I do communicating this lesson is not done because someone is requiring me to do it. The work that I'm doing to present this to you, I'm not doing it because somebody is requiring me to do it. What I'm doing right now, I'm not doing it because someone else is requiring me to do it. What I'm doing right now is arising within the field of the mind of God. What I am saying and sharing right now from the way of mastery is coming from the field of the mind of God. It is the essence of all that I am as Christ. You are the Christ. I am the Christ. We are the Christ. We are the one self that was created by God, the one self that we all share. And that Christ self, that one self that we all share, it arises, it is witnessed and allowed by me. Allow your one self, allow your Christ self, allow your true self and witness your true self and therefore the work is done so the way of knowing is a way of unobstructed feeling the way of knowing is the way of unobstructed allowance and you're going to allow everything that is around you and you're going to allow everything that is arising from within you when you're in the way of knowing you do not repress your feelings you don't try to pretend that you feel something that you don't feel. When you're in the way of knowing, you know that you are the Christ. You are the one self. You are the one creation of God. And you're going to allow it and you are going to witness to it. You're going to allow it and you're going to witness to it. 
Mighty companions, take a breath. So you have the power to awaken to your true nature right now. I'm going to do a quick review of what I've covered so far. Because we just need to remember what we have heard so far. It's so good to be here with you. After coming back from an incredible trip to England where I met other mighty companions that I had a chance to share with. I am a full-time teacher of this. And if you'd like to make a financial expression of appreciation, I would surely appreciate it. Just go to earlpurdy.com, www.earlpurdy.com. And be sure to sign up for my contact list so that I can make you aware of the upcoming presentations that I'm going to be doing. And I'm available for one-on-one -on -one sessions as an advisor, as a mentor. And whatever you're going through right now, I could be used by the Holy Spirit after 40 years of working in New Thought. And I'm an astrologer and a numerologist, and I can bring that into our session if you're open to it. Just go to my website, Earl Purdy, EarlPurdy.com, and it explains in detail the services that I provide. And you can even self-book right there online to actually have a one-on-one -on -one with me. Now, on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, I do hardcore Course in Miracles. So all of the questions or comments related to the Course in Miracles, I will do. I will answer those in, in that particular presentation. Hardcore Course in Miracles, 7 p.m. on Thursdays, every Thursday, on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. And I also post all of my classes on YouTube. On Sundays at 1 p.m. Mountain Time, I do another Course in Miracles presentation on Facebook Live in front of a live audience. And you're invited to tune into that. And of course, on Tuesdays at 7 p.m., I do the Way of Mastery. And I do it live so that you and I can be learning together in real time and so that you can communicate and make comments with each other. I'm happy to answer questions that are related directly to what I'm talking about. That's so I can stay on point and stay on purpose. So I'm going to do a quick review of what we heard this evening. So you have the power to awaken to your true nature. And you can awaken to your true nature right now. So what do you want to take away? What do you want to take away? What do you want to take away from our presentation this evening? Well, is that suffering doesn't really exist, even if I think it does. Why doesn't suffering exist? It doesn't exist because only love can exist. And what I mean by that is only love can last permanently. Love is the only thing that never ends. There is no such thing as eternal suffering or any kind of hurt or pain that can last forever. Even if you are going through some form of hurt or pain in your perception, since it's not being caused by God and it's not being caused by love, it can't exist forever. It cannot last forever. So what is it that else that we heard? We heard that we have to give up our attachment at some point. That at some point you even have to give up your attachment to modalities, to meditations, to textbooks, to theologies. You have to just make the decision that you're going to live in the simple knowledge of the truth. And what is the simple knowledge of the truth? That you are that one. You are God. You are spirit. You are divine. You are love. And when you recognize that you are love, the only thing you can have in your awareness is knowledge. There is nothing you have to do to get to God. There is nothing you have to do to get to God because God is not separate from you. God is always present. God is always with you. You can't ever be separate from what you are. And God, which is love, is what you are. I want you to hear that. I want you to hear that. I want you to hear that 
whatever is the true is whatever is true is always true. If something is true, there are no exceptions. The truth is always true. And you are a manifestation of God showing up as a man or you are a manifestation of God showing up as a woman. You are a manifestation of love showing up as a man or showing up as a woman. Remember that. Because remember, that's what we want to do is remember that. Do you know that every moment is coming up in your life in perfect innocence? Do you know that every moment that is coming up in your life is a moment that is coming up in perfect innocence? Do you know that when you really wake up, when you really wake up, you'll be walking around the world and what you will be seeing in your perception is play. What you will be seeing is a display of phenomena. And that phenomena will be coming from that one mind that you are. That is God. Also, we heard that you can never make a wrong turn. That when you're on your spiritual journey, it is your own unique spiritual journey. And so no matter what happens, it can be used as a part of your awakening. Do you know that only love is real? That was the other point that we heard, that only love is real. Do you know that, did you know that you have allowed yourself, you have allowed yourself to formulate shapes of your experience? You are giving yourself the experience that you're giving yourself just to experience it. You're having the experience that you're having just to experience it. And everything that you've ever gone through is just God choosing to give God that experience. Do you know that you are eternally free? What are you eternally free to do? You are eternally free to choose again. And you will choose. And you're going to choose for the truth. And you're going to start choosing for love and knowledge without end. What else did we hear? We heard that God could never cease to be. Love could never cease to be. What was something else that we heard? We heard that the mind that is awake serves only the Holy Spirit. When your mind is awake, who does your mind serve? Your mind serves only the Holy Spirit when your mind is awake. There's only right-mindedness. Holy Spirit is right-mindedness. When you're serving the Holy Spirit, does that mean you're serving right-mindedness? When you're serving the Holy Spirit, you are serving right-mindedness. When you serve the Holy Spirit, you are serving right-mindedness. So what is the last thing we want to keep in mind? The last thing you want to keep in mind is that when you're on the way of knowing, when you're in the way of knowing, you're in a way of unobstructed feeling. When you're in the way of knowing, you do not block your feelings. You stay aware of all your feelings. You allow. You allow everything that's happening around you when you're in the way of knowing. And do you know that when you are in the way of knowing, you allow whatever is arising within you. Listen to me. All your feelings are innocent. All your feelings are innocent. All your feelings are innocent. Your feelings are just your feelings. All your feelings are innocent. All your feelings are innocent. All your feelings are just your innocence. And you are not doing this and I'm not doing this because anything outside of us is requiring it. We are doing it we're focusing on the truth. We're focusing on these lessons because we are that one. You are that divine one. You are love. And there are only two feelings that you're having, love or the call for love, love or the call for love. That's all you're ever feeling. That's all you're ever feeling, love or a call for love, love or a call for love. That is the only thing that you are ever feeling. Mighty companions, thank you for tuning in to the way of mastery, our time of remembering the truth together, joining together, 
I love the comments that you have made. I also want to invite you to share this video, this live broadcast that's going to be reposted just as soon as I finish. Please share it on your timeline. Please share this and watch it over and over and over again. Remember, the enlightenment, the miracles, the peace that you want to feel, it doesn't happen because you figured this out or you've analyzed it. The love that you want to experience will show up because you are will willing to remember that only love is real. That you're willing to, because you're willing to remember that you have the power to wake up to your true nature right now. And that's why you want to listen to it over and over again. I love you. You are awesome. Thank you, Dana. I'm glad that I'm a Raj conduit. I'm a Raj can do it. And that's what you are too. Love you, mighty companions.